Hey guys, so today, um, I found, I was looking up, like, scary stories, because I'm into that stuff, and I'm really weird, and I like it. I don't know, I just like having the chills. And I saw this, and I was like, there's no way I'm watching that alone, so I'll put it on YouTube. And I don't feel alone when I put something on YouTube, because I know people will be watching it with me, kind of. Like, you know, like, I can share my reaction, so... Let's get into this. It's called Five Scary Basement Horror Stories, so let's watch it. I already feel scared. What? Okay, we're gonna have to watch a couple of these, not all of these. So let's see the first one. That looks pretty weird. Number one. Between the ages of two and five, my family lived in a house that a family friend was renting out. It was a nice house. Three bedrooms, two bathrooms, and a big That's kitchen. That's not that scary. The whole package deal for only <laughs> yeah, 250 a month, and that included the utilities. We were told when we moved in that there were only two floors. The ground floor and the upstairs floor where the bedrooms were. Okay. I remember when we first moved in and I was exploring the backyard. Um, before we go on, um, I'm just gonna say that, um, I don't have a basement, but if I did, I would never, pro I probably would never dare go near it, because... I believe there's places that are haunted, and I just don't risk going into places that I haven't been before. Plus, I have to be, like, shown there's nothing creepy in it. So, yeah, anyways. I had seen a window down at the very bottom of the house. For some reason, it had unnerved me so badly, I immediately burst into tears. Since my parents couldn't get me to explain what had spooked me... They simply took me inside to calm down. The window was a source of fear and unease for me until we moved out when I was five. My parents assumed that I would grow out of it, and I did, but not until we moved out. I could never place why it creeped me out so badly, but I avoided that part of the yard like a plague. My most vivid memory of my childhood happened in this house. I had been asleep in bed one night when a strange thump from downstairs woke me up. I've always been a light sleeper, no. but I fell back asleep no. too quickly for the thud to really make any difference. I woke up again to a heavy, awkward breathing in my ear and someone kneeling next to my bed. When I no. opened my eyes, I saw the pale thin face of a man peering back at me i no. screamed he booked it and my parents brushed it off as a nightmare but let me sleep in their room for the rest of the night a week later my 13 year old sister woke everyone in the house by screaming at the top of her lungs she claimed that she woke up to a man matching the one i had seen crawling into her bed she described his breathing exactly as i remembered it causing me to burst into tears my parents oh were my not God. pleased my sister and i slept in their room Food disappeared real but these could just be fake so don't get too scared really quickly mom always just said it was having two growing children and my dad in the house sometimes things would be moved from where we left them the night before but that was also brushed off my sister assumed the house was haunted. My parents assumed she was just being paranoid. For the next couple of years, this continued on. Food disappeared, things were moved, and we occasionally had nightmares about the same strange man. When we tried to convince our parents that we weren't just dreaming, they brushed us off and insisted we were. This obviously caused a lot of tension between my sister and my parents. The night of my sister's 16th birthday came. The encounter that brought about the end of our stay there. My sister woke us again screaming at the top of her lungs, but it cut off too quickly to be normal. My parents, concerned, went to check on my sister and found a strange man in dirty clothing pinning her down and covering her mouth with his hand. A fight broke out between the man and my dad, but the man was nearly 72 and weak from starvation. It didn't last long, and soon enough wow. the man was subdued, and the cops were called. My mom kept my sister and I in the living room while the cops checked the rest of the house for more people and signs of the man breaking in. Instead, they found a door leading into an unfinished basement. When closed, oh it blended God. in with the wall enough that unless you knew it was there, you would never see it. We had never even noticed it. And apparently, the family friend who owned the house like hadn't even known about it. The one little room was full of pictures of my sister and I in the yard, taken from that basement window. The reason I had always been so frightened of that window came to light. The man had been taking photos of my sister and I for years. That first day, I must have seen a flash of some kind, or maybe the man himself. The man was mentally unstable and claimed that he was in love with my sister and that I was their perfect daughter. He 
He also claimed that since my sister was now 16, that she was old enough to give him another child. I'm not certain what happened, but I do think that he was sent to an asylum instead of prison. Out of the many messed up things to happen to me over my life, this one still takes the cake. I hope you enjoyed the first story. If you're feeling generous, please leave a another? like as it really helps out. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, then subscribe so because long. I upload new scary story videos each week. Let's get back to the stories. Number two, we'll watch two I am alone. I'm sat in a hotel room in a town I don't recognize. I'm done running. You can't outrun a shadow. Never be alone. I wish I'd read those words earlier. It's too late now. They've latched on to me. The whispers are getting louder. All I have this left right is my here story looks like and my grandfather's face. final Just warning. That out. I discovered his body first. I can still remember the putrid smell emanating from behind the basement door. The terror slowly trickling into These my are veins as I stories, descended so into the darkness. Basements. My parents were still tirelessly searching upstairs, but I didn't have the heart to call out to them. I knew what was down there. When the light flickered on, my blood turned to ice. At first, I could only see his feet hovering motionlessly above a toppled chair. Oh my as God. I traced my eyes upwards, I saw everything at once. Mangled skin trapped in a scraggly noose. A murky shadow cast by the dangling light. The pale look of revulsion still etched onto his face. I wanted to scream, to run, to do anything other than stay, but I couldn't. Time froze me on the spot and I watched in horror. It was our fault. No one said it, but it's what they were all thinking. Hidden behind the meaningless platitudes we received from what distant friends my grandfather had left was air of anger and disappointment. You see, my grandfather was not a good man. He wasn't callous or cruel, but bitter and difficult to handle. He hadn't always been like that, but after the death of his wife long before I was born, he deteriorated quickly into the man I knew. My mom claims that he blamed himself for his wife's death. She deteriorated into depression after accidentally running over a young boy in the road. Her heart attack could never be explained by doctors. Her life simply ended, and it drove my yeah. grandfather to become the person I knew. By the time I began to form cognate memories of him, he was already at his worst. Combative, impatient, even deceitful on occasion. He was not a pleasant person to be around. I was a challenging child, and he never... I'm sorry, I can't take the way this guy talks seriously. I think I'm... I, I feel like I'm listening to a teenager telling his story of... I was party got ruined. Like, literally, that's what it sounds like. I'm still sick, guys. Sadly. But, I'm getting over it. Anyways, yeah, you just can't take this guy's voice seriously. I fully learned how to cope with me. My earliest yeah, like, because his every last word is like, you know, yeah, so my voice is like, really, like, stretchy. You know, you can't take this guy seriously. Mostly his seemingly endless triads that followed whenever <laughs> triads. I was him, talks. which was a lot. He remained the same as I grew older, and older. eventually I reached the age where my mother felt no longer obligated to force me to see him anymore. She gave me the choice, and I chose to ignore him. It sounds harsh, even cruel, but he never made the effort to reach out to me. In the last six years, I've only spoken to him once. It was in April this year, a quiet, remarkable morning as far as I remember it. Huh. The phone call only lasted a minute. I wasn't willing to give him the time to explain why he treated me like dirt when I was younger. I don't remember it word for word, but he sounded apologetic. And as if he were crying behind the outward coldness he always displayed. He pleaded with me to visit him, but something about it just felt off, as if he was begging and not in the sense that he was desperate to reconcile our differences. I remember telling him that he would have to make amends with my parents before I could even consider seeing him and then hanging up abruptly. I never received another call. He never rang my parents either, perhaps simply out of fear for their response, huh. or he just assumed they wouldn't listen. It wasn't until late July that we discovered his body. We received a phone call from a neighbor of his that we had remained friends with warning us that he had not been exiting the house in over three weeks and that his usually well-kept garden had become unusually unkempt. My mom reluctantly decided to visit him just to ensure he was alive. 
she hasn't been the same since. None of us have. A shadow has loomed over our family for the last six months. My dad uh -oh. resurrected his old drinking habits, and my mom has sunk into depression. At first, I thought it was just the grief and guilt overwhelming them, but now I think it's something more. It happened to me as well. It started with the needless arguments I would have with my boyfriend that eventually drove us to break up. Oh, girl. I was so upset that I isolated myself from my friends, finding no comfort in any form of social contact. It took a month of this solitude for me to realize that something was off. I'd always been a sprightly person, feeling an endless and unfillable need to be productive in every second I spent awake. Please don't put Recently, yours. I felt that even leaving my apartment is too much to handle. I feel like every creepy picture is like a scar to your mind. I've lost my job, my friends. I haven't spoken to my parents in weeks. Your, your job? But I've gotten a feeling that they're in the exact same position I am. It's like there's something weighing me down, something keeping me alone. Curiosity got the better of me. I needed to know why my grandfather killed himself. I thought that maybe if I discovered the reason, I might be able to move on. So I returned to the house. Despite his seeming lack of interest in my life, he left it to me in his will. I began searching everywhere. The police had already looked around, but it's unlikely that they looked extensively. Given the nature of his death, given the nature of his death, they didn't have much doubt but it was a suicide. I found the letter in the room I used to stay in as a child. I don't have much time now. The whispers are starting to make sense. I'll transcribe the letter as quickly as I can. Dearest Anna, though it pains me that my last words to you must be written... I no longer have the time to convince you to speak with me. I have alienated everyone I know, and in doing so, a shadow has grown upon my heart. I am being followed. Every moment of my life is now consumed with fear. They are everywhere, Anna, and they do not stop. It's the curse of our family. Your grandmother was consumed by it. She even told me, and I didn't believe her. I caused her death, and I have lived with my mistake for the last 20 years of my life. Now I must warn you, for I fear you may fall under the same curse. Once again, it looks it like starts another with face. the whispers. They are too quiet to hear at first, but they soon start to make sense. Then come the shadows. The darkness of my house has grown. Even during the day, when light shines throughout the windows, the room is still dark. This is creepy. You can't escape them, no matter how far you go. I tried to run, but the shadows followed me. No one else can see them, only... I had a gym exactly... Like, it looked exactly like this, and I was at my friend's house. And I said in this door, exactly, that uh, there was something haunted, but they didn't believe me, and my room cut off then. I have weird dreams. No one will believe me, nor will they you, should they latch on to you. The only thing that stops them is others. Surround yourself with others, Anna. It keeps the shadows at bay. They I'm thirsty. like loneliness. That's how they got my Andrea. I left her alone too often. For me, it's now just too late. I can only just summon the motivation to write you this letter. The whispers make sense now. The shadows are moving in. I will not let them take me. Not like they took my Andrea. Give my love to my daughter and my son-in-law. I hope they can forgive me. Never be alone, Anna. Never be alone. I don't have much time. The whispers. This is They're scary. starting to make sense. I don't think I can kill myself. I'm not brave enough. They're getting louder. I can hear them behind me. The room is too dark. Why are they repeating the same word? They're wrong. They're wrong. I didn't let him die. I'm not a murderer. Number three. Okay. Had a weird cliffhanger, guys. So if you want to see part two to this, make sure you tell me. Like, subscribe, comment, share. A lot of good stuff. Hope you enjoyed and uh, don't believe scary stuff. Uh, yeah, stay cool. Bye.